Hey everybody, Movie Reviewer Next Door here, and I'm back with another review. And this time, I saw Scorched Earth. This is a 2018 uh, post-apocalyptic sci-fi western film directed by Peter Howitt. And it stars Gina Carano, John Hanna, Ryan Robbins, uh, Dean S. Jagger, uh, Stephanie Bennett, and Luvia Peterson. In this film, in a post-apocalyptic future, bounty hunter Attica Cage pursues a ruthless outlaw at the head of a dangerous criminal gang. So, what did I think of Scorched Earth? Well, I've seen this film a couple times. I recently saw another Gina Carano western, Terror on the Prairie, and I wanted to revisit this one because I remembered this one being quite a bit of fun, and I still think it is. It's not going to win any awards for originality, again, but what it does well, I think it does pretty well, and I can give a lot of credit to things that this film does that many other films of higher budgets don't do anymore. But let me get to the cast. Gina Carano plays Attica Cage. Uh, she is a... Uh, or, or Attica Gage, excuse me. Um... I think this is her best performance so far, because even in Terror on the Prairie, I would say, she, uh, even though she's going for a more serious thing, and it makes sense that she's kind of like downbeat for a lot of the, for a lot of the start of the film, she does get better as the film goes on, and she has some pretty good moments. But I think this is the best overall performance because she knows what movie she's in, a fun post-apocalyptic western type of film with a fun tone, and she has a fun performance to go with it. Her energy really does show on the screen, and I'm legitimately impressed with what she did here. It's not like she did a bunch of, like, um, dramatic stuff in this, but I still enjoyed her, and at no point was I like, this is acting. I was like, ooh, this is just a, f like, a fun character. John Hanna plays Doc. She's one of Gage's best friends. He basically works on her whenever she needs uh, medical help. He's also the coroner for their little town. Um, I like him. I've seen him in quite a few other films. He was in The Mummy. He was in Four Weddings and a Funeral. The Hurricane. Yeah, a, a, a good actor for sure. Um, and I think he does a good job here. Ryan Robbins plays Thomas Jackson. He's basically the criminal leader of this town called Defiance. Um, I've seen him in a few direct-to-video action films. Uh, he was also in AVP Requiem, Paycheck, Wa The Walking Tall remake, um, Sniper Assassin's End, and Rogue Mission. He's also in Sniper Grit, which I haven't seen yet. I want to go through the Sniper series again. Uh, I do think he's a good actor as well, and I think... He also plays his does his performance with a bit of a fun thing to it, where it's not like it's serious enough that you understand he's the villain, and he does enough villainous stuff. But he also has fun with it. He's a bit free, and I found that to be a nice change of pace from every villain, either being super serious or being super over the top. Um, Dean S. Jagger plays Lear, the right hand man of uh, Thomas. I like, I'm I'm fine with his performance here. He doesn't get a ton to do. Last film I saw him in was um, One Ranger with uh, Thomas Jane, which I'd say this is definitely a better film than that. Um, I wouldn't say One Ranger is a bad movie, but it definitely misplaced some of the, like I was really looking forward to Thomas Jane being a badass and he didn't do enough, I don't think. And that film was just kind of eh. But yeah, I think Dean's Jagger could have been used a bit more, some more fights, given his look and everything. And, uh, wait, S Stephanie Bennett plays Melina, who's like the girlfriend of Ryan Robbins' character. She's fine. And Luvia Peterson plays Chavo. She's a small role, but I still liked what she did with it. It was fun. And overall, what what I can say about this film, again... You see the cover of this. What do you expect? You see Gina Carano with a gun, 
the tagline. I'm not amazed. I'm not really happy with this tagline because it's like every female starring action film does this. Bringing men to justice is her only reward. Even though she brings a couple women to justice as well. Um, well, at least one. Um, I I'm not a fan of when movies do that. They're like, oh, she's getting the evil men. And that is one small thing I can say about this. It does kind of follow the whole, like, pretty much all men are scumbags unless they're friends of this character. Um, which I'm not big on. At least here, it's not as horribly done as a lot of other films, like Black Widow do it. And even though I, to an extent, enjoy this film, Never Let Go. Um, but yeah, like... When you see the cover of this film, you're expecting Gina Carano shooting bad guys, beating them up, MMA style. And while I will say there's plenty of pretty good shootouts, actually, some pretty well-staged, pretty fun blood squibs, pretty fun violence, I I do think that this film needed some more hand-to-hand combat. Because when you hire someone like Gina Carano, this is an issue I've had with a lot of Gina Carano's films outside of Haywire, is that when it's an action movie that she's in, which is the majority of films that she's in, save save for um, Tower on the Prairie, I wouldn't really consider an action film. It's more of a like slow burn Western drama thriller. Most of the films she's been in are action movies, and ever since Haywire, there hasn't haven't been any fights that I've seen that have been as well choreographed as Haywire, as brutal seeming as Haywire. Um, even in Blood and Bone, which I haven't seen yet, I've seen the clip multiple times of her fighting the random person on the street. She is allowed to be like insane, like beating the shit out of this girl. She's all bloody. Her face is fucked up. That's cool. That's what I expect when I see an MMA person in an action movie, starring especially. And Gina Carano is definitely among the better actors that have come from the MMA. And that that is actually saying something. She's not bad here. She's actually good. She actually works for what this role needs her to do, which is be kind of a smart ass, like gives no shit or gives no fucks type of thing. And I think she does that very well. She has the presence of that. But again, ever since Haywire in the films that I've seen her in, like Extraction kind of had a couple moments, but the best fight scene in that film was between, um, what what's his name? Uh, it was between Kellen Lutz and some guy. Uh, Daughter of the Wolf was more drama thriller, which I was a bit disappointed by that. In the Blood, I like, but I can also say, like, some disappointing stuff with that. Heist, she got no martial arts to do. Again, she's not, she's more of a side character in that. But, like, a lot of films that I've seen her in, even though I've enjoyed her in those films for the most part, um don't have the choreography of Haywire, which some people don't like the choreography of Haywire. I understand it. I do. I like that they kind of coldly shot a lot of the fight scenes in that way where it just feels like, oh, you're watching this brutal fight instead of it cutting all the time. And I just wish we could go back to that to an extent. Maybe Steven Soderbergh needs to make a sequel to Haywire. It kind of left it a bit open. The ending was a bit open, but in a, in a way that would make me wish for another movie, not... And even if there wasn't another movie, I still really like Haywire. But um, here, I do think she gets enough to do to an extent. She has a couple fight scenes. Uh, the one with Dinas Jagger is kind of mad. The one with Chavo is a bit more fun. Um, there's plenty of shootouts. There's one scene that stands out as being like, ooh, they actually pulled off some pretty impressive stuff, given what the low budget of this probably was. There's a scene where she like shoots a shoots a stick of dynamite on the end of a crossbow into a tank and it fucking explodes. It's a real explosion. That's one thing I can 100% give this movie, practical effects. There might have been some CGI blood at one point, but for the most part, it was blood squibs and practical explosions. And I can always give credit for that. That is a legitimate thing to give credit for nowadays. So, so rare. 
that you see films using practical effects like explosions, blood squibs, and all that. Um, there's some really like punchy sound effects. There are some really punchy sound effects used for this stuff. There's some nice gore at points. Um, there's a bit where a character gets like a spear through the top of their head. That's pretty cool. Um, there's a bit near the end where Attica is using a uh, a shotgun and she blows a fucking hole through somebody. That was sick. But overall, the the story of this film, I guess that's my biggest issue. It's not really an issue for me because I understood what it was going to be seen it before and even when i first saw it there there weren't really any big surprises like the reason attica is doing all this stuff isn't really a surprise to me um and her motivations make sense it's it's not like there's things in the movie that don't make sense like that i do wish that it did a bit more to like separate itself from other westerns i have not seen it yet but i saw multiple comments saying that the story of this is almost exactly like the quick and the dead directed by sam raimi i have not seen it yet i do want to see it i'm very curious how sharon stone will pull off a western but gene hackman is the villain which i love gene hackman he's one of my favorite actors from back in that day i think he beats out robert de niro i think he beats out joe pesci i think he beats out marlon brando i've always enjoyed gene hackman um but with this film, I'd say what, what really makes it stand out from a lot of other direct-to-video type films of its type is the attention to detail with certain things. The whole thing of like using tabs to purify water because it's the post-apocalypse and using like ground-up silver and their masks to purify the air so that they don't get black lung. I think that was a nice attention to detail that... I was like, oh, they've really thought, they've actually thought out this world pretty well. And most movies of this type probably wouldn't even think about that. It would probably be an afterthought, but it becomes a pretty important part of the film. People are like gambling with their water tabs. People are trying to like get into a silver mine to get unlimited silver. Um, yeah, it, it's, it, it makes it a bit more interesting than your typical. Uh, post-apocalyptic film or western and even though this doesn't have a lot of like westernisms in it the set design is definitely very reminiscent of westerns the tone is very reminiscent of like john wayne films like rio lobo rio bravo uh not exactly the shootus the shootus was one of his more like dramatic films um more like like kind of mcclintock that level of like tone in a way like not straight up comedy but there are like comedic bits that even though this film takes itself as seriously as it needs to it still is nice levity it keeps the audience engaged because it's not just constantly depressing and this film is not depressing at all there's some dark stuff that happens at small points but not to the point where it's like okay that was unnecessary it's it's more so needed to push the story along. And I will say the set design here, I don't know if this is one of those um, sets that you just like rent or whatever. I didn't recognize it. This film was made in Canada. So it's one of those movies that I'm guessing there's going to be like 50 reviews on Letterboxd saying like, oh, this was just made from Canadian tax money. So that means it's uh, creatively bankrupt and while I'll agree that it's not super original I'm not going to say that a movie is shit just because it's made from Canadian tax dollars or can the Canadian like film fund like you could say the same exact thing about Georgia or Kentucky but you won't but like I I think this film looks really nice it it, it looks really nice for the most part there's some really cool there's a really nice effect shot at the beginning showing like how the clouds look after the great death of the universe and whatever. And they don't harp on the whole like pollution caused it or greenhouse gases, that bullshit. I'm glad they don't. It's mostly left up to the opening narration. But there's some really nice effects in the background of clouds like being colorful and shit. And they are quite pretty um, in a in a way. And... 
this is this is just one of those movies i'm not gonna say it's like a classic or anything but it's one where i can just pick it up watch it and have fun with it and yeah that's what it is there are issues i do think again dns jagger doesn't get enough to do and I'm pretty sure he's done like some type, he's like in boxing or some type of thing. Cause I mean, you don't get that big from nothing. He doesn't do much more than shoot a couple people and have a s small fight scene with Gina Carano that's not much of a fight scene. Um, Gina Carano definitely needed more MMA type stuff to do. I wanted to see her like actually throw down with more people than just Chavo, like throw down with another MMA type person. Um, Gina Carano and Scott Adkins teaming up in a movie would be pretty cool. I wonder if that would ever happen. Um, the story could definitely use some more twists and turns. It it is d definitely very predictable. Um, you could always use a couple more shootouts. I understand it's kind of a, a kind of a uh the freaking uh, a fistful of dollars type story kind of but yeah overall just this is just a pretty fun western if i had to compare it to terror on the prairie which again is going for something completely different i'd say they're neck and neck for enjoyability again it's kind of hard to compare these because this is more of a like watch at any time movie because it's just fun terror on the prairie is kind of a more like downbeat or trying to be more realistic of a western when this is trying to be more of just a gun blazing fun western but yeah i i really did enjoy this and i again hope to see more of gina Carano's work i hope that her next movie is more of a fighting type movie and yeah that was my review of scorched earth if you've seen the film let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below if you have any recommendations put them down there as well and uh, movie review next door. Out. Oh.